Knowledge and Wisdom is written by popular philosopher Bertrand Russell. In this text, he has tried to make an essential distinction between knowledge and wisdom. The Latin word scientium, from which we get the English word science, means knowledge in the sense of knowing about things, called facts, and the causes of things. In this sense, knowledge is something we acquire through effort. So a knowledgeable person knows not only, for example, that fire is hot, but also why and how fire is hot. But wisdom is different. It is a part of the inner mind that is inaccessible to us if the highest state of consciousness we are in the second state of consciousness. Wisdom only appears when we are in the third state. A wise person will employ that knowledge not only for his own benefit, but also for the benefit of others. Perhaps he'll invent a more efficient furnace. Perhaps he'll help develop a cleaner burning more fuel. Efficient automobile. A foolish person, by contrast, who is the exact opposite of a wise person, knows exactly the same thing. Fire is hit and why, but will not use that knowledge wisely. For example, he may burn his house down and himself up because he fell asleep in bed while smoking a slow-burning cigarette or cigar. Russell makes the same point in his essay when talking about scientists learning about atomic energy and obtaining the knowledge of how to split the atom. But those same scientists were unwise because they temporarily forgot or didn't think about who would use that knowledge to make atomic bombs and do harm. Russell thinks that wisdom should be the aim of education when he says the essence of wisdom is emancipation as far as possible. From the tyranny of the here and now, knowledge is largely of the here and now of things. We cannot help the egoism of our senses. Sight, sound, touch, and emotions are bound up with our own bodies and cannot be made impersonal. An infant feels hunger or discomfort and is unaffected except by his own physical condition. But gradually as his thoughts and feelings become less personal and he achieves growing wisdom, no one can view the world with complete impartiality. But it is possible to make a continual approach towards impartiality, which constitutes growth in wisdom. Can wisdom in this sense he taught? And if it can, should the teaching of it be one of the aims of education? I should answer both of these questions in the affirmative. Russell says the end of all human endeavors should be wisdom since the capacity for wisdom defines human beings and distinguishes them from all other forms of animal life. But Russell thinks with every increase of knowledge and skill, wisdom becomes more necessary. For every such increase augments our capacity of realizing our purposes and therefore augments our capacity for evil if our purposes are unwise. The world needs wisdom as it has never needed it before. And if knowledge continues to increase, the world will need wisdom in the future even more than it does now. That Russellian description of increasing knowledge and increasing knowledge and increasing capacity to do evil if our purposes are unwise indicates that gaining wisdom is a process, just as gaining knowledge is a process. But Russell also indicates that the process involves becoming less centered on ourselves and the here and now and more impartial and intellectually broad-minded so that we may become wise citizens of the world rather than merely good citizens, patriots, of this or that smaller country or faction. Russell says it is not only in public ways but in private life equally that wisdom is needed. It is needed in the choice of ends to be pursued and in emancipation from personal prejudice. So once again, according to Russell, there is not only public responsibility for leaders and governments to make wise decisions, because foolish decisions may have disastrous consequences upon public life. But wisdom is needed in private life as well. In short, Russell seems to think that our own choice of ends, what we are responsible for desiring and attempting to obtain, requires wisdom, for wit, we are personally responsible.